Okay, yeah. Hello, everyone. So, uh, this is joint work with Moses Ganadi, Anthony Lin, who's sitting in the audience, and Georg Zetsche. So, let's take a look at this example program. Um, we have three variables, x1, x2, and x3. And we say x1 is a real variable. It gets some real input. x2 and x3 get integers as input. We want that x1 is greater than 0 and x3 is greater than 0. And uh, then we enter a while loop while this variable x2 is greater than 0. We add to x1 in each step, 1 half, and then we assign to x2 just the difference of x3 minus um, x1 floor. So this floor operator means it's the greatest integer that is smaller than x1. So remember that x1 is a real uh, variable. Now we could ask the question, okay, how can we prove that this program terminates? Um, I mean, you immediately see that this should terminate because we just add uh, one half in each step to x1. So this is unbounded in some sense, yeah? And then um, here x3 is, um, we, are, we subtract x1. So in th at some point, x2 will go below zero. But one way to do is, do this is um, to look at the reachability relation. We have after at least one iteration. So this can be expressed as a real integer linear arithmetic formula. So this is a formula where you have both reals and integers. And you have uh, addition, you have smaller, and you have this um, floor operator as it is also in the program. So and the x's are the, the values I start with and the y's are the new values here that I can reach. So this formula looks like this. So you have at the beginning, you say, okay, x, the x's should all be uh, greater than zero. And we know that the third component here doesn't change. Yeah, x3 will always be the same. So y3 is equal to x3. And then we say um, there exists some iteration n, yeah, such that y1 is, also the new value of x1, is um, the old value plus the multiple of n, uh, the multiple of 1 half, so n times 1 half. And the same for y2 is just x3 minus the floor of this expression, expression here. So, okay, so this is now a formula. And what we want to do is we want to check if uh, the program terminates. So we want, we ask the question now, does there exist an infinite path in this, that is defined in this formula? Uh, like this, so for valuations a1, b1, c1 for the, for the axis. And uh, as I said, okay, here in this example, this is not the case because uh, the AIs, so the valuations of the X1, they would grow unboundedly, which means that the BIs go below zero at some point. The setting um, I want to talk about is, so how can we automatically check if such, in, in such a given formula, we have such an infinite path? Uh, and the other example is um, a non-terminating program. Here we have only two variables, X1, X2, X1, again, a real variable. Then we say, instead of just adding in each step uh, one half, we say we have now one half times x1 plus one half, which is also given some input, so it's a lower bound for our input, and then we just assign it to x1. And then we have another input, just gives us some integer that is um, non-negative, and then we say, okay, we say x2 minus the floor of x1 minus t2. So uh, in this case, we can also uh, formulate the reachability relation again as uh, some linear um, arithmetic formula, it looks like this. So here, instead of equality, we have now uh, lower and upper bounds on y1 and y2. And you see that, okay, this reachability relation is quite easy because after um, one step, you can always uh, already reach every state you want. So this is an easy case here. And uh, again, the question, okay, does there exist an infinite path like this? And yes, in this case, it does because um, if you start with any value between zero and one, let's say one half, for your x1, then this expression here, so if the user inputs just exactly the lower bound here, one half times x1 plus one half, then this will give you precisely the, mid, the middle of your actual value x1 and one. So, and then in the next step, you do it again, you get the middle of that and so on. So you have, you have this um, convergent behavior against one, but you will never actually reach one, which means that this floor here will always be zero. Then the user could always also input zero and then x2 doesn't change, so if you start with some value that is greater than zero, then uh, this loop is not terminating. So yes, you have an infinite path here. Okay, and uh, what I want to propose here is that one can use uh, something called the Ramsey quantifier to um, solve such problems. So the Ramsey quantifier looks like this. 
um, you bound, uh, you, have, you have two uh, vectors of variables x and y that you bind with the Ramsey quantifier, and you have a vector of free variables z, and phi is some formula, in our case it's linear arithmetic. Then you say um, that the valuation of these three variables here fulfills this formula if and only if there exists an infinite sequence of valuations ai. So you want that these ai are pairwise distinct, such that phi of ai aj c holds for all i smaller j. So this corresponds to an infinite uh, directed clique in our graph that is defined by the formula phi if we fix the valuation for the set. So as an example um, down here, so. Uh, when we say that x should be smaller than y, then this corresponds to in our clique we want that um, the values uh, strictly increase, but they are still below some yeah, upper bound set, which is a free variable. So as an example before, this is possible in the reals where we have this convergent behavior, but not in the integers, because if you, if you are strictly increasing, then it will uh, definitely be um, exceeding every bound you take here, as I said. And what makes a difference now is that uh, if we take the set here um, existentially quantified within the Ramsey quantifier, so it's not a free variable anymore, then it is satisfiable because for every pair of uh, x and y's, you can now choose a new value for the set. So you can make the set larger and larger, and then you can still um, be below it and strictly increasing. So let's, can let, let me come back to our programs here. So for the terminating program, um, we ask now the question, does there not exist an infinite clique? Yeah? We do not want to have to do this infinite path. So I talked about infinite path paths before, but here you see that in you know, a reachability relation this is the same as an infinite clique because this is transitive. Yeah? So in, in general, this is of course undecidable. If, um, a given, uh, if in a given formula you have an infinite path, in a given linear uh, arithmetic formula, um, but that's the reason we, we are working with um, with uh, cliques here, and it is decidable there. In fact, we can eliminate it. So what we actually want to do is we want to check satisfiability of this formula here. And um, okay, how do you do this? Well, you just hand it to an SMT solver, yeah? But uh, this does not work because SMT solvers do not uh, allow you to write something with a Ramsey quantifier. It's not uh, allowed. So uh, what, what our paper here does is, is it eliminates the Ramsey quantifier in terms of more additional existence quantifiers. And this an SMT solver can handle. Yeah? So we enable us uh, to use actually SMT solvers to check satisfiability of this formula and also to check that um, the, the program here terminates. And in the non-terminating example it's the same, but we don't have the negation here. So here we really want to have an infinite, an infinite clique. So let me come to our main result. So um, as I said, we want to eliminate the Ramsey quantifier. So our main result is that um, if we are given an existential formula in real and in linear integer real arithmetic, then we con can construct in polynomial time a formula of linear size uh, that is equivalent to this Ramsey quantified formula. So this means we can eliminate the Ramsey quantifier in polynomial time, and the result will be a formula of linear size. But be aware that we get existential quantifiers, okay? Um, and this was already known that there is an effective elimination procedure for this, but it had much higher complexity. One part of it was that um, they assume the formula to be quantifier free instead of existential. Yeah, we assume here at the beginning we have an existential formula. Uh, and um, the only way to do this in their method was okay, we have to um, eliminate these existential quantifiers, and this is okay. This blows up, and what we show is that we don't have to really eliminate these, but we can shift these into the Ramsey quantifier instead. And then we eliminate the Ramsey quantifier, and this will give us a better complexity. So let me show how this actually works, so how we can get rid of these existential quantifiers. So here you are given some formula with existential quantifier W, and uh, as I said, in this setting, we can take in our clique for every pair a new valuation for the W. So here in this example, clique it would be, okay, for A, B, we take some valuation U, for B, C, we take V, and so on, okay? So it doesn't matter. So for every pair, we can take a different one. And now what we, what we show is that <clears throat> you can always take some, uh, some, special, some special valuation here. So 
we extend now the vectors x and y that are bound by the Ramsey quantifier with additional uh, components, in this case v1, v2, and w1, w2. And then we always we can always choose as the valuation for our existentially quantified variable here the, um, the first additional guy here, so v1, plus the second additional guy here, so w2. Yeah, so in this example here, we have now vertices not only with a, b, and c, we have now a with two additional components, u1, u2, b, v1, v2, and so on. And now for this edge here, so for this pair of a and b, we can always choose the sum of u1, so the first additional uh, element, and v2, so the second additional element. So of course, if you have such a clique, then you also have such a clique, but the other direction is the, yeah, actually in the non-trivial direction. So I think I have a bit of time to go into the idea, so how we would prove something like this. So um, the first step could be, okay, let's take a look at how these cliques actually look like. Maybe we can express them already in like Pressburg arithmetic if we are dealing with uh, linear, linear integer arithmetic. But then you will notice, okay, there are formulas like this, where you can have y is greater than 2 times x and some additional restriction on the x. The problem here with this formula is that in your clique, this uh, forces the clique to grow um, exponentially. And this is something you cannot express in Pressburg arithmetic. But what our strategy will be is that um, the existence of such a clique uh, is equivalent to saying, okay, there exists such it's, it's just an incre and strictly increasing sequence such that for all elements of the sequence, this additional restriction psi holds. And this now can be expressed. So this is just, yeah, this is just um, an increasing. Um, it's just a smaller symbol, right? So we can express this. And the idea is to, okay, so I mean one direction is clear. If you have a click in here, then you also have a strictly increasing click. But the other direction also, if you have a strictly increasing click, then you can take a sub-click of this, so an infinite subsequence, such that this fulfills this. But you, uh, we will not express actually this infinite clique in the, the first formula here. So <coughs> um, let's really quickly look at uh, the, the idea. So let's say we have a conjunction of inequalities. So on the left side, we are talking about the axis. The whites on the right side, the y's, the free variable set, and some constants. And what we do is we, we actually guess a vector of uh, integers that can also be omega, so we can also guess this if a, if a symbol should be omega. And then um, we want them to be guessed like the, how these uh, right, left and right hand sides evolve during your sequence. Yeah? So you, you guess actually an upper bound of the supremum of the left hand side and the lower bound of the limb inf of the right hand side. And then uh, we, we showed that um, there is um, a condition which is called compatibility, so such a sequence is called compatible with this profile here, so this is a sequence, uh, this uh, tuple, um, if and only if um, this had this shape, and we also want that it is admissible. Yeah. We want that these values here are smaller than the other, so we want that uh, in some sense these lower bounds here are smaller than the upper bounds, and then we can, then we can fulfill this uh, inequality here. Um, so we show that um, the, the, the Ramsey quantified formula is equivalent to saying there exists an admissible profile P such that is, there is a sequence compatible with P for C. And this can now be expressed in linear uh, arithmetic. And one key feature here is to restrict two sequences of a special form where we have some initial vector A0 and then we add some multiple of another vector. So one can show that this actually suffices and then you can express this um, condition here with the help of uh, matrices, essentially. So let me uh, quickly show you some applications where we, uh, with our result, um, get complete complexity results. So one thing is uh, linear liveness. So we have already seen some sort of liveness in this termination, non-termination uh, example. But if you, so linear liveness is the problem of, so you're given some system and you want to check if if there's an infinite um, clique or an infinite path in the system in the reachability relation of that system such that um, you reach some state infinitely often in it. Linear liveness means, okay, you can also um, say that some, yeah, some, some formula should hold between every pair of this, 
of this sequence. So this is a bit more general even. And we show that this is NP complete for various systems like continuous VAS, reversal bounded counter machines, Pariga automata, and succinct one counter automata. And the key feature here is that in all of these systems, we can actually compute this reachability relation in polynomial time. And if we computed this, then we can uh, then we can add the Ramsey quantifier, eliminate it, in, and then we get an NP procedure here. And if we check model, uh, if you check um, satisfiability, then uh, what also can be done here is checking if some uh, given Pressburger formula, uh, quantifier free, is a well quasi order. So here you can imagine so you want to check if there is some um, infinite descending chain. Essentially, and this can be expressed with. Um, with Ramsey quantifiers, we show that this problem is co-NP complete. And uh, also one application, this may seem a little bit um, unrelated, but um, one can show that the problem of monadic decomposability is co-NP complete. So what does this mean? So um, monadic decomposability, you are given a formula yeah, with multiple, multiple free variables. And now you want to check, can you somehow decouple these variables? This means, can you somehow find an equivalent formula such that it is a, it is a, a Boolean combination of uh, unary formulas, yeah? formulas that only have one free variable. This means you completely separated those variables. And uh, here where the Ramsey quantifier comes into play is where you, um, you, you, you check if an equivalence relation has finite indexes actually, and this can be done. Yeah. And that's it. Thank you. All right. Questions? So, uh, what aspect of uh, integer arithmetic uh, is crucial here besides the fact that there is elimination? Uh, what do you mean with, with integers? Inti yeah, linear integer arithmetic. For example, uh, so your, your motivation was an uh, integer program, but I can also think of it as a, I, I can also probably come up with a program which has uninterpreted functions, and then I can define a well order uh, uh, on that domain, on a domain, and then I can ask the question, is it the case that, you know, this program terminates? I can translate the same question to a, uh, uh, a Ramsey quantifier formula, but this time it, it won't be integers. Yeah, but in the proof we have really heavily used the, f the facts really that we are, that we are dealing with um, integer or real linear arithmetic formulas. Um, so like like in this in this shape, yeah, where we have we have this uh, these inequalities, and then we are doing some stuff with Ramsey's theorem where we can get like um, sub cliques, and uh, yeah, I, I'm not so. Of course, one natural question is, so how does this work for other theories like uh, like EUF or whatever you're talking about? But yeah, at the moment, we don't know. Okay. And the other question is, uh, so there's this thing called integer linear loops. Um, again? Uh, linear loops okay. where you have a, it's like a while, yeah. some condition, some linear condition, and then the loop body looks like yeah. a linear transformation. Yeah. So, so it's some similar like this, right? But uh, Without the, the problem is that um, you, you want that the reachability relation is expressible in linear arithmetic. Here. So there, the huh? Oh, but it's just a linear transformation. X is equal to a. A is a matrix multiplied by X. Yeah, but but the transitive closure is a problem, right? Mm. Okay. One step, okay. Yeah, I give you that. But <laughs> the transitive closure, no. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again then.